בוקר טוב חברים בישראל. This morning I, it is in my heart deeply to be able to talk to my Jewish brothers and sisters in Israel. And um, do the video will be in English, it will not be in Hebrew. But I wanted to talk to you a little bit uh, regarding the law of jealousy in the book of Numbers in chapter 5. We know it's a simple, simple law. It's not a, a very deep law, but it's when a, a man's wife has been defiled. Uh, there is a law of jealousy that, that Moses gave our people. And because it's, of course, it's a, it's a, it's a sin for, for this to take place for another man to have another man's wife. But the problem is, is um, it provokes a jealousy inside of a man when uh, another man is, is after his wife. And yet Hashem put this law in there as a warning to us uh, the way he felt about us. And I'm going to bring to your attention, uh, not from the book of Numbers, but uh, uh, but from uh, not you know Bed Midbar, uh, 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 but from the book of uh, Deuteronomy and Davrim. We will let's take a look at the. I'm going to read to you in uh, verse 16. Um, they provoked him to jealousy with strange gods, and with abominations they provoked him to anger. We you know this is the children of Israel. They're in their wilderness journey, and God has been very upset with them, uh, constantly serving other gods. And instead of uh, Hashem, when Moses goes up on the mountain for 40 days, we know that God, uh, Moses comes back down to find out that they have already built a golden calf altar, or an altar and put a golden calf on it, serving other gods only after 40 days. And yet Hashem had done so many miracles in their sight. How could this happen? Interesting. But let's look at this quickly here. They provoked him to jealousy with strange gods. With an abominations, they provoked him to anger. They sacrificed to powerless spirits, to gods whom they knew not. To new gods, they came newly up, <clears throat> whom your fathers feared not. Of the rock that begot thee, thou art unmindful, and hast forgotten God that formed thee. And I'm going to pick back up here in just a minute and read a little bit more for you, but I really wanted to bring this to your attention right here. Uh, the rock of, of the rock that begot thee, thou art unmindful. And we know that the rock, Hatsua, the rock that was in the wilderness that gave the life-giving waters, we know according to David, as I've mentioned to you before in Isaiah, that this rock was Hashem. It was... Uh, the, it, not that the, the literal rock is Hashem, but there's something interesting about the rock. Our, our fathers, uh, forefathers, knew that the rock father followed, uh, followed the children of Israel around. And interestingly enough, the Christian Bible brings this out as well, but the Christian Bible says that, that Jesus, Christ, was that rock uh, and, and, and said that the rock followed them around. Speaking of that, that He was that rock. And of course, as I've mentioned to you before, the, the idea that he, uh, when he was stabbed in his side by the Roman soldier on the, at the cross, the water that came from his side uh, was a representation of the life-giving water that came and gave water, gave life to the children of Israel. Now the point I want to bring out to you, my brothers, as we look at this, is that the, the scripture here says, Of the rock that begot thee, thou art unmindful. Now, this has to have more of a prophetic overtone rather than something that is happening right then and there. And the reason I say that is because uh, the rock that was in the wilderness gave them life giving water to be able to live physically. But did it, did it, did it, give, the, give, it give birth to them? In one way, yes. Because in the Garden of Eden, Adam was split. He was opened up and half of him, his, his self was given to make Eve which brought forth, begot uh, his wife, and therefore they begin to beget children. 
Um, if we go back, it says, and has forgotten God that formed thee. That's where the forming is. Adam was formed. He was, he was created. He was made. And he was given the life that was put in him, the nefesh chayim. He became a living soul, which is uh, uh, la nefesh chayim, as for the soul, was the life of, of, of Hashem. And we, we can see this clearly by the way it is written in the Hebrew tongue. And, um, but we're, we're no longer mindful of what God did. And, but when it says, the rock that begot thee, thou art unmindful, it, 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 it seems to me that, that Hashem is speaking of the rock that would come because we, we have to remember we lost the spirit of Almighty God when the fall came in the Garden of Eden. Our children were born, they would die. The evidence of the fact that they would die should be obvious enough to us that we had lost something. And the question is, is what did we lose? We lost life. And we needed life back. So the rock had to come again. Adam had life at one time. He gave to his wife as far as his side was opened up. And God made him a wife, not just from the flesh, not just from the DNA, but from also from the spirit that was inside of Adam, the Chaim. A plural form of life, which is Hashem's life made his wife and therefore they would bring they were able they could bring forth children and they would have not only been life of the physical flesh but they would have also been life of Hashem inside of them kadusha you know and and you know we, we, we sit here we look at, at um, I, I think a rabbi Winston we see his videos on YouTube quite a bit and rabbi Winston is always saying you know what haven't we done right it's not that we haven't done something right. We did what we were called for as a nation. We are a priestly nation. We were raised up to offer sacrifice for sins. Have, have, we, ever, have we ever wondered why at the destruction of the, of the temple, the second temple, that we've never offered sacrifices again, and yet God still receives the, 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 the sacrifice of our praise and our worship to Him? Have we ever not considered the fact that maybe that this man called Jesus was actually the rock that he's speaking of that would begotten us? He says, of the rock that begot thee, thou art unmindful. When Jesus was on this earth, we paid no attention to him. We were unmindful. We didn't care. If he truly is that rock, if he is as, as the writer Paul, who was a Jewish writer, if he really is the rock, we were unmindful of him and allowed him to be put to death. Now, that, when Rabbi Winston says, what haven't we done right? That, that was meant for us to do. We were raised up a priestly nation. Who else but the Levites could offer the sacrifice to God? There had to be a lamb offered up for the sins of the people once a year. And it was the reason why that the sacrifice was to be offered once a year is because eventually God would take and bring Moshiach, and he would have to be offered up. It's written in the Talmud that before, or before the destruction of the second temple, that Moshiach should come. But we forget this now, don't we? We have forgotten what was written by the blessed rabbis because it didn't come the way we thought it should come. He didn't come the way we thought he should come. But the fact is, he did come. And if we begin to really search the scripture, it's written in here. In the law of jealousy, it is written right here. Read what he says here. Let's go down a little further. And when the Lord saw it, you know, after he's speaking about how the, that we were unmindful of the rock that had begotten us, he said, and he abhorred them. Because of the provocation of his sons and of his daughters. And he said, I will hide my face from them and I will see what their end shall be. It's prophetic, brothers. It, it really is not speaking of the time in the wilderness. Because Hashem did not hide his face from us then. Moses throws himself in between Hashem and us and said, blot my name out of the book before you blot theirs out. He was doing like Moshiach. And he was Moshiach. He was anointed for, for, the, for the purpose and the call that he was born for. 
But Moshiach ben David was yet to come, but like him, he threw himself in the middle. So therefore God did not turn his, his face from our people at that time. But he says, I will hide my face from them and I will see what their end shall be. For they are very perverse generation, children in whom is no faith. They have moved me to jealousy with no God. It's amazing. It's, it wasn't for a lack of being religious. It wasn't a lack for, as, as Rabbi Winston says, what haven't we done right? It wasn't for a lack of not doing something right. Now, truly, our fathers in the wilderness, they had built the, the, the golden calf. Uh, you know, everything was messed up. But, you know, what's the difference today? Rabbi Winston speaks of the golden era. He's talking about the economy, the, 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 the prosperity. And nothing wrong with prosperity, but our, many of our Jewish brethren have gotten so caught up in the prosperity, we have forgotten Hashem. Oh, we give. We give back to Israel. Well, praise God. I'm, I'm glad to see we give to the, 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 the prosperity. This Jewish prosperity is giving back to Israel. But is that what God wants? No. He wants our love and our attention. So he says here, he says, They have moved me to jealousy with a no God. They have provoked me to anger with their vanities, and I will move them to jealousy with a no people. I know this is not uncommon. I know Christian people quote this all the time. But I realize there is a lot of people in Christianity, different religions, different denominations, everything you could imagine. And, and no wonder why God speaks of in, in the Christian Bible that he would send two witnesses to, to, uh, that would actually be the ones that, the, that would be the catalyst for the Jewish people to believe that, uh, that, that truly that Jesus was Moshiach ben David. No wonder why he has to send two witnesses. You want to know why? Especially for the Christian people. You want to know why he sends two witnesses? Because there's so many different denominations in Christianity. Who's right? The only one right was Jesus in the first place. But everyone has to build the denomination, a doctrine around whatever that they believe is right, and they're all right in their own eyes. So you know, for, for Jews, we, we cannot accept this. How, how could we accept who Moshiach ben David is? How could we accept that Jesus might truly be the Messiah with all the different denominations that are out there? We need what we have need of is Moshiach ben David himself. And we will believe a prophet. Give us two witnesses that have the signs of God, of a prophet. This we would believe. And not the way, you know, I'm kind of getting off my thought here. I wanted to come back to the jealousy part of this. But my Jewish brethren, we know, is it not make you jealous i know it makes me jealous when i sit there and i see the 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 exploits that are done among christian people the dead are raised the blind receive their sight things of this nature and they say in the name of jesus the name of jesus they say of the jesus the christ moshiach these things are done and I do know it to be true because when Hashem spoke to me audibly and he said, pray for your mother's eyes, I pray for her in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach ben David, Jesus the Christ. And my mother received 20-20 vision the same day. You know, so the thing that was provoking me to jealousy, to see that, and still, I still, my heart is, is, is pricked by it sometimes to see the, the, all the blessings that are poured out upon these people, even though they have the different doctrines, even though they have the different denominations, still, God is doing something among them. But their time is coming to an end because they are doing as we did. They are rejecting their Messiah. They are no longer, they throw God out of the Bible, I mean out of the schools, they throw God out of their politics, everything you could imagine, they have totally gotten rid of him. Just as we did. The Christians are doing this now. Now you go into churches, I hear that there are churches that don't even have a cross up any longer. Slowly but surely, they got rid of him out of their schools. They throw the Bible out of the school. They throw their Bibles out of, uh, out of politics. They don't pray anymore. Not like their founding fathers, not like George Washington and, 
Abraham Lincoln and, and, and great men like that, like we had David and Solomon who God was in everything we did, they have thrown all that out. And then they wonder why this nation is headed for judgment. It's headed for judgment for the same thing that happened to Israel. We rejected God as well. We were not mindful of the rock that came. And he says here, Hashem says to us right here, because of what we did, he says, I will hide my face from them. I will see what their end shall be. It, it, it reminds me, uh, I believe it's in Hosea, the fifth chapter where God says that he would turn his back upon us. But in the third day, in sixth chapter, the first and second, third first verses there, I will gather them again. Speaking of the house of Israel. And truly, 2,700 years later, in the third day, we have been gathered again as a people, as a nation. We are ready for Moshiach. Our doors are open every Pesach. At, at the Seder table, we set the, the glass of wine out for Elijah. We're looking for his return. Even Moses, there are many rabbinical uh, scholars who believe that Moses will return. It'll be Moshiach in him. It would be or be Moses inside of the Moshiach that would return. And no doubt from Rashi's comment on um, Exodus Shemot uh, in chapter 15 where Moses says that he would sing the song of Moses as a future. I will sing. I will sing unto the Lord. It's time, my brother. We have got... What haven't we done right? We need to turn our hearts to Him with everything. We need to search the Torah and the Tanakh and the Navim, the Kotavim. We need to search the prophets and the writings. Not just what Moses said and bless Moshe. He was a great, our greatest prophet ever. But Moshe said that the Lord thy God would raise up a prophet like it unto me. And if truly, if Jesus was this prophet, if he is the rock, if his side, when it was opened up, the water that came forth was a representation of that life. He said, you're not mindful. And we were, we were, we have to face it. We weren't mindful, but it, what haven't we done right? We did right. We crucified him. And I hate to say it like that. I don't mean that to sound bad when I say that. But the thing was, was who else could do it? We had to be blinded in order to be able to be willing to crucify him. Had we known who he was, we would have never done it. But then again, had Joseph's brethren known who he really was, if they knew his spirituality of Joseph, that he was indeed anointed and called of God to save the world, they would have never sold him out. They would have embraced him. And when the famine came, he would have not been in Egypt. He wouldn't have been where he was supposed to be. He would not have taken a Gentile wife. He would not have children by her. They would have not been included into the, to the economy of God. And it's the same today. Had we not, and had we recognized who Jesus really was, we wouldn't have sacrificed him. There would be no Gentile salvation. There would be nothing that would be provoking us to jealousy. And where would we be? Where would we be then? It was to save life. And that's what this was all about. Our hour is now arriving. What can we do? Pray. Turn our hearts to the wall and bitterly weep out before Hashem and ask Him if Yeshua truly is Moshiach ben David. Hashem, reveal this to our heart. We need to know. Send us Eliyahu ve Moshe. Tell us, O oh God. As Rabbi Winston says, we don't need a war of Gog and Magog to wake us up or to shake us up. If we ourselves will turn our faces to Hashem and seek Him with all of our heart and not be willing just to push aside this, this Jesus 
and say, no, we don't believe it. We don't accept it. No, we can't do that. We have got to find out where we went wrong. We have been in exile for 2,000 years. Some of our people have returned home, but we should be in our homeland ourselves. We should be there because that's where God promised to bless Abraham, our father. And he told him, anytime you're outside the land, he was never blessed. He was just condemned. Everything happened, went wrong with him. But when he was in the homeland, everything was okay. We have got to find our roots. We've got to find out where we left God for 2,000 years. I mean, it should be obvious to us something before the destruction of the second temple went wrong. We've been in exile ever since. Let's quit denying things. And instead of being so quick, you know, to, to condemn something, let us seek Hashem and really and truly from our hearts ask Him. Efo, Efo, Yeshua. Efo, Mashiach ben David. Where? Where is he? Efo, who? Where is he? And all kinds of miracles. I know we have miracles that happen to our people as well. It's, it's obvious. It happens to us. Look at the miracles that were happening to Joseph's brethren. They didn't know, they didn't know why, why, why was the money res restored, you know? It was at the hand of their brother. They had no idea. They had no idea why they were being blessed. They were being fed, everything. Why? We need to look. We need to search. Baruch Habah.